and to welcome back to my channel. When it comes to designing power apps, there's this one thing I have been waiting for forever. And actually it turns out it's not just me because when I posted about it on LinkedIn, it blew up. Yeah! Now, if you've ever tried to try and make your applications look a little bit like the iOS as an example, or maybe Windows Vista, you may have struggled to add that nice background blur effect. Well, last weekend I was playing around with Power Apps and I discovered that actually you certainly can. So I've checked with the team just to make sure it's not a glitch and it turns out that there have been some changes to the back end engine of Power Apps that allows us to render way more CSS property in HTML control. So today I'm going to show you how to achieve this effect with literally two lines of code and 10 seconds. Let's dive right in. Okay, so here's the application. As you can see, we have the HTML control on the bottom with a little bit of background blur. Now, this control is semi-transparent white just to add a little bit of a shade and makes the, make the text more legible on top. And I've also added a little bit of inset box shadow in here too, just to make it look even prettier. And you can just see how natively this application looks when it comes to comparison between power apps and mobile phone apps, as an example. Then we have a couple more screens. So this is in dark mode, as you can see. And in here we have the dark mode kind of control, again, blurring out the background a little bit and adding some text on top, just to add that nice extra touch that just really takes applications to the next level. And then we have one more screen. Now in this screen, we actually have the background blur on both the control here, but also on the navigation menu. So you can see that as I'm scrolling down, there's the background blur and I can see what I'm scrolling down on. Now, when it comes to doing this on a navigation menu, you want to make sure that it's not too transparent. So uh, you want to still be able to see the icons on top just to make sure that users can see exactly what the icons are and what they are supposed to do. So let me quickly show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do the white one and how to do the dark one as well. And I'll pop the source code in the description box below as well. If you want to just copy and paste, that's absolutely fine. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to add the HTML control. So I'm just going to pop that onto the screen. And what we want to do in here is we just want to add a simple div element. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know exactly what we're doing. So first of all, I'm just going to pop div and div just to make sure we have that covered. And within here, we're going to add what's called inline styling. So I'm just going to add style and then single quotes. And then between here is where our styling goes. So first of all, we want to define the width and the height because that's not added by default. So I'm going to say for the width, I want the width to be responsive or uh, relative to the size of the control. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use double quotes and the ampersand sign, and we're going to pop in self dot width width. There we go. And then we'll close that off with ampersand and double quote. And then we need to add PX for pixels at the end. Then we will also do the same for the height. For the height, it will be double quote and ampersand and then again self and then dot height. Now with height, for some reason, the HTML control always adds one pixel on top, which will then result in a scroll bar. So to take that out, all we have to do is just do minus one and then do ampersand and double quote and then pixel again. Now, next thing that we want to do is we want to add some background. So we will add background white for the time being, just so you can see what's happening here. And as you can see, we now have this control here. And you might be wondering, Christine, you just said the scroll bar will disappear, but there's one thing that I need to show you as well. So we'll do that. And what we want to do now is we want to turn the background to be semi-transparent because you want to be able to see through the background blur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an RGBA value instead. And in RGBA, white is effectively 255, 255, 255, and then one. Okay, so to make it semi-transparent, I will just make it, let's say 0 0.1. That's maybe not enough. Let's just make it 0 0.4. 0 0.5 maybe even. Okay, so before we were able to do background blur, this is the furthest you could take it. And now suddenly we can do background blur. So the next thing that we need to do is, to, is just add the background blur. So to do this, we have to use a CSS property, which is called backdrop filter. And then within here, we just define the blur. And for the blur, I always suggest that you keep it to between, let's say four and 10 pixels, anything more it will really blur out the background a little bit too much. So if I just add five pixels as an example, as you can see, we now have that blur in here. Now, before I add any more code, I'm just going to do one thing, and this is to remove the padding because by default, the HTML control automatically adds five pixels of padding to each of the corners. So I'm just going to 
remove that and as you can see we now have a full responsive control in here now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of border radius just because I think it will just add some extra kind of niceness to that so I'm just going to add border radius and we'll just make it let's say 25 pixel now for my border radius I only want the border radius to be uh, round on the top here and on the top here and then on the bottom I want this to be square because we want this to go all the way down to the screen and to do that we have to define the border radius using the four figures so um, it goes from top left to bottom right so it goes top left top right bottom right and then bottom left so the first figure will be 25 pixel the second one will be 25 pixel the next one will be zero pixel because we want that to be square and the next one we want that to be zero pixel and hopefully you will be able to see here that we now have a round corner in here and then square here and actually we might make it a little bit rounder perhaps 45 just to give it a little bit more of an edge and maybe even 55 or 65 let's just do a little bit extra okay and now we have that in here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that to the bottom and then I will reorder this send that to the back and again we could make it fully responsive by linking that to the screen size or adding that within the container but that's not the purpose of the video so please don't kill me so now we have that here what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to perhaps increase the color maybe a little bit more okay that looks fine and now I'm going to add the box shadow now if you don't know how to write box shadow that's perfectly fine I'm going to actually show you a hack how you can add all of this with literally no lines of code at all now when it comes to writing box shadow sometimes it can be a little bit tricky and I'm going to show you a tool by my favorite designer ever you may have seen me retweet everything he posts on Twitter because I just adore his work and that is Michal Malevich and he runs what's called the Hype for Academy, which is a design agency, which is going to be renamed apparently as well. Now, when it comes to here, we have what's called the clay morphism generator, and I have showed you this before. Now, the beauty of clay morphism is that it also has these nice shadows inside. Now, with clay morphism, by default, it, it's just white background or some colored background and then nice kind of inside box shadow. But what we can do in here is we can actually copy and paste the code directly from here so let's just say I want to make this white as an example and I want this to be depth 10 it will just bring the edges even more inside and then it even adds the background blur for you as well so it does all of the work that you need to do and I'm just going to get this to control and C and we'll go into my application now it does have border radius by default so we will remove that in a second I'll go into here and I'll just pop that into here and in a second as you can see that's not done it properly for us i assume we have too many backgrounds oh that's because we still have this as one so before we do anything i'm just going to change the border radius to be exactly what we had before which was 65 pixels 65 pixels zero pixel zero pixel and all we have to do now now i've copied this code all i have to do is just change the transparency so i'll just do 0 0.51 and as you can see we now have this control and it took me like seconds and we have this nice box shadow hopefully you can see that and hopefully that translates well but it just adds to that nice kind of like aero effect that we get aero glass effects that we get uh, used to get in windows vista as an example and just takes to yet another level so this is for the white control now let's have a look how to do the dark control as well okay and now for the dark control what i'm going to do first is i'm just going to go back to my previous screen and do Control and c and then go into here and just paste it because i'm lazy i'm just going to get that in here what we want to do first you want to revert around the uh, border radius so i'm just going to open this up there we go and i'm just going to swap these over so this will be zero this will be zero and then i think the border radius on the bottom should be 45 for this one uh, just to match the image as well and then we can make it slightly smaller we can make it slightly less narrow just to line up with our image perfectly um, there we go now if I zoom in you can probably see that we have a little bit of a corner here and this is caused because there's some outside box shadow by default added when we copy the code from the clay morphism generator and this is this first line in here so if you don't want that corner to appear there all you have to do is just delete this line and just make sure you include the comma as well I'll take that out and that corner has dissipated as well now I'm just going to bring back the text a little bit to the front so I'm just going to go into here and just get all of these um, things from here and then 
right click, reorder, and then bring to front. And now what we want to do is we want to just change the color of this control. So for here, we can just change the RGBA value. Now in RGBA, our black is literally zero, zero, zero. And as you can see, we now have that ready. Now for me personally, it, it looks okay, but I prefer the shadows to be a little bit less intense because I feel like the white, such white, in, very intense white in general, just makes it stand out a little bit too much. So what we can actually do is we can just add a little bit more transparency. So in here, as you can see, we have that set to 0 0.6. I will make it 0 0.3 just to make it less intense. And for this one, I will just add an A and then add perhaps 0 0.3 again, transparency, maybe 0 0.2. Mm, okay, I think that looks fine. There we go. So as you can see, it looks nice because it creates that nice glass effect without making it too overpowering. So that's it. And that brings us to the end of today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. See you soon.